I'm gonna make myself nauseous. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> So I'm off my meds. <laughs> there is currently at the time of shooting this a national shortage of Adderall. That's that's a problem uh, <laughs> for those of us who, you know, need to use our brains, um, which is a lot of us. Do you want a fidget? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm off my meds today and I did that for a couple of reasons. One, in solidarity, because there is currently a national meds shortage. There were a lot of people that got diagnosed with ADHD over the course of COVID and now there is an Adderall shortage apparently. So a lot of people are not able to get their stimulant medication. And that's a problem because a lot of us design our lives around being able to take medication and being able to function in a way that medication facilitates for us. So someone asked in the comments, can you talk about this? Can you talk about what you do when you can't get your meds? And while this is the first time I've seen a national med shortage like this, there are many times over the course of the 20 plus years that I've been taking medication that I have not been able to take my meds or have chosen not to take my meds and had to learn how to cope without them. So I thought I'd share. First of all, what medication does for me. When I was in eighth grade and I started taking stimulant medication, it was like putting on glasses for the first time. Like I could focus and I was like, well, is this what it's like for everybody else? Suddenly the effort I was already putting in worked a little bit better. It definitely helped with my productivity. It helped with my mood. It helped even with my self-esteem. I was finding it a little bit easier to interact with my peers. When I'm off my meds, it's a lot fuzzier, it's harder to focus. I'm more emotional, I'll melt down a little bit more easily. I'm tired, I'm usually hungry because the stimulant medication is an appetite suppressant and it's a lot harder to focus. My brain's a little fuzzy. I wanna preface this by saying there are some times where I choose to take a break from my medication. I know that I've been working really hard and my body and brain could use a bit of a break and so I, I'll choose not to take my meds on a Saturday or a Sunday or whatever and have just kind of a veg out day because I know if I take my medication, my medication's gonna kick in, I'm gonna wanna do things, and it's gonna be hard for me to relax sometimes. So there are times where I will intentionally not take my meds. There are other times where I really would have wanted to take my meds, but I just didn't have them for whatever reason. After I started the channel, after a year maybe, I was like, well, you know, I, I have all these coping skills, like maybe I don't need to take meds anymore. And so I tried going off of them and just relying on coping strategies. And it turns out I need my meds to use a lot of those coping strategies, at least very effectively. Writing for the channel was really difficult. There are certain things that I can do off my meds and there are certain things that I find really, really difficult. If I try to work when I'm not on my meds, it can be almost painful. It can be like, I, I put it this way in the TED talk, sometimes like getting my brain to to do something it's not interested in doing is kind of like trying to nail jello to the wall. It feels almost like a pointless pursuit sometimes of like I'm putting in a lot of effort and not at all achieving any sort of decent results. So one of the biggest things that I do when it's a short term, I can't take my meds or didn't take my meds today is I readjust my workload, readjust my expectations as to like what I think I'm gonna get done today and just allow myself to have a day to wander, have a couple of days for my brain to rest. And that's, that's a lot of times what I do. But if it were for a longer period of time, like I'm seeing some people that have gone like a month without their meds, if I had to do that, it would be a bit of a different approach because I can't just take a month off, right? For me at my job, that probably wouldn't work for a lot of people at their jobs. So what I do in those situations where it's a longer period of time is I lean harder on my coping mechanisms. So things like body doubling or pomodoros or whatever, but I'll also adjust them so that they're a little bit easier to do. And I basically treat it like I'm gonna have a bad brain day. Sometimes even on my meds, I'll have a bad brain day where I didn't sleep very well or I don't know, I didn't eat very well. Like I just don't, I don't feel great I'm, or I'm really distracted by something and having a hard time focusing. So I'll use a lot of the same techniques where instead of a 25 minute Pomodoro, I'll use a 10 minute Pomodoro because that's about as long as I can focus for. I'll also kind of pay attention to like what my brain wants to work on. And sometimes I'll try and rearrange my work schedule based on that because it's harder to get motivation for me, at least when I'm not on my meds. So if I am motivated to do something, I'm a lot more likely to try and ride that wave. I also personally, I let people know like, hey, I haven't been able to get my meds. I'm not on my meds this week and just set the expectations both for them and for me that I'm not working with optimal treatment right now. Like I'm not firing on all cylinders, I guess. I don't know if it's always safe to, to talk about that at my job and in my relationship, it is. I'm able to say that and like not 
I guess, not be judged. At least for me personally, I've found that it's important to like let people know what's going on so that it, sometimes so that I, if I get frustrated with myself, they can be like, hey, like you're off your meds right now. Like, of course, it's going to be a little bit harder. Of course, you're going to get distracted. Of course, you're going to be silly. It's fine. And I'm lucky that I have that. I know that not everybody does. It's a bit of a privilege that I do have relationships like that and a job like that. There's one last thing that I do, which is especially if I'm going to be off my meds for a longer period of time, I start to really pay attention to my brain chemistry because that's essentially what meds do is they balance out my brain chemistry. They, they provide a little extra stimulation. Um, my mood is a little bit better on my meds. And so I know that I can tend to get more depressed. And so I have a few things that are non-negotiable for me. Um, and I'm not saying this would work for everybody, but this is what I do. I don't drink alcohol if I'm in a bad place. So either if I'm starting to feel like I'm slipping into depression or if I'm not on my meds, I try not to drink because that's going to make it harder for my brain to, for my brain smoothie to be delicious. I don't know. <laughs> it's going to make it a little bit harder for, for my brain to be in a good place. So I'll avoid that. And I will make certain things mandatory, even if I don't want to do them, even if I don't feel like doing them. And one of those things is exercise. So I definitely have an easier time exercising if I'm on my meds, but if I'm not, I should really still exercise. So I will kind of make myself do it and just tell myself like, hey, this is a mandatory thing because you're gonna have a really not fun day if you don't do this. Then yeah, I will make sure that I walk to work instead of drive or you know, I will do my workout or uh, I'll just, I'll do something physical. Even if it's just like 10 jumping jacks, like I'll do something because I need to get my brain chemistry into a better place. It's not optimal treatment, but it's better than nothing. Another thing that I'll do is um, I have, like my regular medication is an extended release. So it lasts for most of the day, lasts for most of the day. Um, it definitely wears off, but I also have something called a homework pill. If I take my regular meds in the morning, by the time it gets to the afternoon, if I need to still work late that night, then it's really hard for me to do that because my meds are kind of wearing off. So my psychiatrist prescribed me a homework pill, which is essentially a short acting stimulant, low dose that you can take as a bit of a booster. So I have those and I, and they're optional for me. What that means is I have some left over. So if for whatever reason I can't get my regular meds, I can at least take the homework pill that day instead. Or, you know, I can drink coffee. Again, none of these are as effective for me as my regular medication. There's a reason I take what I usually take, but it's still better than nothing. The four things, I pay attention to my brain chemistry. I let people know. I adjust my work plans. I adjust my expectations for how productive I'm gonna be and like what kinds of things I'll be able to work on. And then in the situations where I really don't have a choice and I have to get done what I have to get done, I lean heavily on my coping strategies and I use more body doubles. I use Pomodoro timers and I make sure that I'm making them short enough that I can actually use them and I can, I can be able to focus. I hope some of this is helpful. I'd love if you let me know in the comments below too, like what you do when you're off your meds and what helps you because it's just my personal experience. So yeah, let me know. Let me know in the comments. If you're not sure about medication in general and it's something that you're considering, we have this great episode on medication and some of the stigma against it. And a doctor explains how medication works for ADHD, which I definitely recommend checking out. Thank you to my brain advocates and all my Patreon brains for making it so that I can afford my prescription medication even when my insurance doesn't cover it so that I do have my meds and it definitely makes it a lot easier to get things done. <laughs> like, subscribe, click all the things and I will see you next video. Bye, brains.